Hello everyone, welcome back to the XSP Green Monster channel. My name is Riley and my channel is all about the work I do on my 1997 Chevrolet Suburban car audio and mechanic work. Um, if you're clicking for the first time, thank you for clicking on the video. I hope you guys enjoy it. Today I'm going to be finishing up some work on the monster that I didn't get done last time, which is shrinking the box. If you remember, I had to, I'll link that video right here too. Um, if you remember, I had to cut down the 45s because I couldn't fit them in the box anymore with the straight pieces in, which was totally my fault. I just didn't plan well enough. So I got those cut down, I'm gonna put them in, and after that, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to calculate the internal volume of your box, especially if it's a weird shape. So I got all my stuff ready. We're gonna head down to the truck and get the stuff installed, hopefully quickly, and then silicone all the edges, and it'll be done. Back on the truck now, I've got the pieces right down here. Three pieces now, you can kind of see them. So I'm just gonna be getting those inside of the box and then screwing them in, attaching them, and after they're attached, I will go back in with silicone and silicone all the edges to make sure there's a proper seal around it. So I don't want any um, air leaking into the chamber there. Um, could cause some noise. Could also throw off the subwoofers a little bit. So I'm gonna set the camera down and we'll get right to that. Okay, so pieces are in, I'm gonna show you what pieces we have. So we've got a 10 and a half inch 45 back there from point to point, a 10 and a half inch piece right here. I don't know why it's not in focus, there we go. 10 and a half inch piece right here, and then there is a five inch piece behind that, I believe. So one 10 and a half piece is gonna go up in that corner. One's gonna be going right here, and one's gonna be going down here from the foreboard to my baffles. So it's too hard for me to film while I'm inside the box simply because it messed up with the camera. I'll see if I, I might be able to sneak it back in the corner for some of the shots, but I won't be able to film this part right now. So I'm just gonna go in there. I'm gonna get really hot this way because it's really hot outside day and really hot in the car. I'm gonna get those pieces just screwed in and then I'll pick you guys back up and show you where I'm at. All right, just finished getting those pieces installed. A little bit of blood, a little bit of sweat later and we're good. So I'll show you guys where we are. I ended up taking out the sub because it just made things a lot easier. But we've got those two 45s in and this 45 in. So I'm just gonna put on a glove, get the silicone, and then run a bead on every single edge of that and then just smooth it out with my finger. All right guys, just finish up siliconing this and then we're gonna go upstairs and I'm gonna show you how to calculate the internal volume of your box. I'm gonna have to bring my subwoofer upstairs because I wanna leave that in here, especially when it's working subwoofer. But I'll show you guys. So, I got all the seams silicone, you can see. See it shining there. There's a little thing down there in the corner, but it doesn't have to be pretty to be loud. So, I'd say it's looking pretty good. We'll see how much I actually shrunk the box by. Hopefully I'm down by 10 or 11 cubes. And make sure you guys open up your door if you silicone inside your car, two doors preferably. Silicone's pretty nasty chemical and I definitely feel it feels like I'm breathing in vinegar just being in an open doorway right here so make sure you open up all the doors of your car if possible just to air it out it's just silicone's a really nasty chemical and you don't want to be breathing in it for too long even in small amounts so pick you guys back up when we get back up to the apartment <sighs> all right back up at the apartment hopped in the shower washed off all that sweat and dirt and blood I had on me um, wasn't actually that much. I don't want to make it sound like I bled a lot during that. I just poked my finger. But, um, the thing now I'm going to show you guys how to calculate your box volume. And with this, you have to remember the internal volume is the only thing that matters. So I'll kind of show you what I mean once I get this drawn out. So I'll show you drawing it out. Let me just get my notebook open here. So. That's nice. So right here, we'll say that this needs to be whatever. So we've got the back wall of the box, top, side, there's a front baffle, here's Port. We'll just say it's like that. That's base. That's gonna be your basic box 
box, ported box. Now obviously mine's vertical, this being the top of the car, and then this being the floor of my vehicle. This one pointing towards the driver's seat. So, I that was what it was originally. I added a six inch 45 here. I added a 12 inch by 12 inch box there, and then I added two 10 and a half Oops, 0.5. 10 and a half inch 45s there. Shrinking the volume box by wherever that and the sub sits right there about. So that's what we're looking like for the box. Um, yeah, so the port volume, so I'm gonna say this out and I also have 45s in here already as you've seen, but from here on my box, this line all the way to here, and on everyone's box, that is not calculated in for your port volume. So all we're looking for, none of this, you're just looking for this volume. Port volume gets subtracted because that's where the frequency resonates and you don't actually wanna add that into the volume root box because this is your loading chamber, everything right here that I'm cross hatching. So everything right there that's crosshatched is your loading chamber. So that's where a sub actually loads and then allows it to push the sound wave down and out. And we'll see how this works with my box with everything slanted down. It might adjust the, it might play a little weird now, but I think it'll sound pretty good. So that's what we're gonna calculate here. And basically, originally I'll have to get out, get out my phone and look at what the specs of that was originally because I forget that all the time. So we've got from here to here, 29.5 inches. From here to here, we've got 25 inches. And then going back this way, we've got 37.5 inches. So that's as much as my box. So the overall internal volume of that box is just gonna be 37.5, and this is inside this, so really this should be right here and right here, sorry. That's 37.5, that's 25. So from right there, that, so that's this big chamber. And this is how I would do this, is I just calculate that as one big square. So that's what I'm gonna do first, it's just gonna be 37.5 times 29.5 times 25 inches. And let me get to my calculator now. So we got 37.5 times 29.5 times 25. And that's gonna give me that I have 27,656.25 cubic inches of space inside that box. Now I'm gonna change this to feet, because obviously everything is in cubic feet, but first I must subtract the rest of this. So then there's also this 12, so I'm just gonna label that. That's area one, area two. Area two, those are both gonna be the same, obviously. And then we've got area three down here. So area one is gonna be 12 times 12 times 37.5 which is going to be 5,400. So it's going to be a negative 5,400 inches cubed. Since that space is going to be subtracted out of the overall big box space. So this is basically, this is the big cube. This is the little cube inside the box. And then I calculate the 45s. So to calculate these 45s, I know that the hypotenuse of the triangle, which if you haven't taken the geometry, hypotenuse is the long end of the triangle right there. And I know since it's a 45 degree angle, so both these angles are 45, that these two sides are going to be the exact same. And the hypotenuse for those is 10.5 inches. So formula for that is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, c squared being the hypotenuse. So this is gonna be 10.5 squared is equal to, those are both the same, so I can use the exact same thing. It's gonna be x squared plus x squared. Normally it would be a squared plus b squared, 
but since they're the same, I'm just gonna write them down as x. So this is 10.5 squared is going to be equal to 2x squared. First thing we do is we're gonna square 10.5. Gonna get 110.25, then we're gonna divide, whoops, divide the two over, divide it in half. And then if you square root that, you'll get x. So I'll just square root that so we can see it. So that gives me that this length right here is 7.425 inches on that. So now to find the volume of these, you're gonna take 7.25 and then you're gonna square that and then you're gonna multiply that. So 7.425 squared and then times 37.5 of the length and then that's gonna get You're gonna get some number like this, and then that divided by two, since it's a, uh, cause then you solve for a square. You didn't solve for a triangle. This side likes you. Just multiply those two sides as if this was a complete square. So as if this was a square, and then just divide it by two, and it'll have half the volume. So we get 1,033.59. That's a negative cubic inches. And then that's gonna be, there's gonna be two of those because there's two 10 and a half inch 45s. And I'm just gonna complete this exact same process for the six inch one. So it's gonna be six squared equals two X squared, which is gonna be 36 equals X squared. And I'm gonna shortcut this a little bit. I'm just gonna do 36 times 37.5 divided by two. I'm gonna get that, that little one is gonna be 675, negative 675 inches cubed. So now we're just gonna take this big number up here, so we're gonna take 27,656.25, and we're gonna subtract all negative numbers, so minus 5,400, minus 1,033.56, minus 1,033.56, minus 675. And so I'm gonna get that my new volume after all that I did is going to be 19,514.04 cubic inches. Now no one tells you measurements in cubic inches for subwoofer boxes. So to convert that to cubic feet, I'll show you here. So conversion rate is going to be, so cubic inches obviously it's inches cubed. There's 12 inches in a foot. So a cubic foot is equal to 12 cubed, if that makes sense. So there's 12 inches in a foot, so you get from inches cubed to feet cubed, there's obviously gonna be 12 inches in a foot, so it's just 12 inches cubed. And if we go to here, we go 12 cubed, we get 1728. So now to go from there to there, we're gonna have, we're gonna do the train track method, which is, I don't know who calls it that anymore, but that's how I learned it. So 1,094, inches cubed and we want that to go to feet cubed so you put 1728 inches cubed is equivalent to one foot cubed and then this inches are going to cancel and you're going to be left with that is going to equal 19,514.04 divided by 1728 feet cubed. So then if I solve that, so if I take 19,000 on here, 19,000, whoops, shit, 19,000, 19, 19,514.04, divided by 1728. I'm gonna get that my box is now 11.3 cubic feet. And there you go. So that's what my box is now, which I'm much more happy with that than 16 cubes. That means I took off, because before it was like almost exactly 16 cubic feet. So that means I took off 4.7 cubic feet of airspace with those. So I'm pretty happy with that. That's about where I want it to be. 
If you've never calculated volumes of boxes before, I hope that that helped you way out of focus. There we go. So if you never calculated the volume box before, that's how you want to do it. Um, or at least that's one way you can do it. You can always calculate the complex shape in the middle, but it makes it a lot easier if you break it down into simple shapes and then you subtract those simple shapes out of there. So you're just looking, most boxes are just going to be um, squares and triangles. If you're going to do a circle, so say in here, I'll show you guys this. So say for some reason I had, let me get this back in focus. I had a large support beam in the middle and that large support beam was two inches in radius. So four inch diameter. So then you would just take pi times the radius, pi times two times, pi times radius squared, sorry, so you're gonna get pi times four which is gonna be 3.14 times four, and you get 12.56, then you're gonna multiply that by 37.5, at least for me, because that's my length of the beam. And that's gonna equal 471. So that is equivalent to 471 cubic inches. And the reason you do that is because if you have this here, so if you calculate, pi r squared calculates the area of that. And if you multiply that area, by how long that travels, in my case, 37.5 inches, then you're gonna get the total volume inside of that. So if you're gonna do that, then you have the volume of this. So say you had a kerf somewhere in here that was a two inch radius. So then you could calculate the whole circle, the whole thing, and then just divide that by four, and then you would get the quarter volume, which is what a radius is. Obviously, because a radius would be this shape right here. That shape, kind of like that, is what you're taking out. So, that's how you calculate the internal volumes of your box. I hope that helped if you don't know how to do it, and I hope that you enjoyed watching, sorry, I'm just trying to focus this while I'm looking at the screen. I hope you enjoyed watching me sweat and bleed in my car a little bit. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel if you enjoy what I make, and I'll see you guys in the next one.